Okay, down to the final step in the process. Deflection. So deflection is how much uh, the the uh, beam actually moves or sags, and it's a unit of, of distance. Um, for those of you that took POE, you'll remember that you did the activity um, where you had somebody stand on a 2 by 4 and measured the deflection and that sort of thing. Now, that's what we're talking about. Uh, now, there are two criteria for uh, deflection limits. So the first thing is you have to take the dead load plus the live load. Let's just refresh our memories. The dead load was 50 pounds per square foot. The live load was 100 pounds per square foot. And we added those up to get the total design load. Okay. Now we're talking about the beam, so we need to use the uh, dead the dead load plus the live load on the beam uh, over the tributary width was a thousand uh, pounds per lineal foot. So that's what we're going to use for the first check. This uh, L over two forty. So L over two forty just means you divide the length by uh, two hundred and forty, uh, and that's the limit of the sag. And it's going to be a small number. Uh, you'll recall L is uh, 18 feet. That's the span of the beam. Okay. And 18 feet times 12 inches per foot. We're doing the conversion to inches because uh, uh, it's going to be it's going to be a small amount of deflection. This is a steel beam. Remember, it's not going to move feet. It's going to move fractions of an inch. So we're just converting it into a smaller unit. And uh, that should give you uh, 216, I believe, inches. A -A -A in the group, and always verify my math, right? Um, I'm not always doing it on the fly. I'm doing it from memory when I when I show you these videos. So um, it's 216 inches, and we divide that by 240, and we get a deflection limit for the combined, um, what do you call it, dead and live loads of... Uh, 0 0.90 inches. 0 0.90 inches. Okay. Now, uh, the deflection for the limits for live loads only is less than that. And that's because, in this case, we're supporting a plaster ceiling. Plaster ceilings are very brittle and can crack. So uh, we have to do that again. It's still a 216-inch beam. Divided by 360 this time gives us uh, a deflection limit of uh, 0.6, I think it is, inches. So when we do the actual deflection calculations, we're going to have to do that twice as well. Um, we're going to do dead load plus live load and then just live load only. But you'll notice... These have the same, these are proportional. The, the live load is two-thirds of the total design load. So, in fact, uh, it's just a ratio of two-thirds uh, between the, you know, live load deflection limits and the combined design load deflection limits. So keep that in mind um, because... The, just because the uh, dead load, uh, the, sorry, the live load is two-thirds of the total design load, um, we can use that to uh, our advantage to make a shortcut. All right, so this is the limits, the allowable, okay? Now, we have to go and calculate the actual. So here's that gnarly formula, and um, we're going to start with the total design load, dead load plus live load, because uh, it's an e easy number. It's 1,000 pounds per foot. So we get, now here's where you really, really, really need to pay attention to your dimensional analysis. Five unitless, 1,000 pounds per foot. And our units are in inches, like E is, uh, is uh, pounds per square inch and I is inches to the fourth. So we absolutely need to make sure we are doing our uh, unit conversions and, and dimensional analysis to get the right unit. So we have to convert uh, 12 inches to the foot here. Whoops, oh, that's backwards, isn't it? Yeah, see, I got it upside down. That's why I do this. It's actually one foot per 12 inches in order to make our units work out. One foot over 12 inches. OK, 
Okay, and this is all going to be in the numerator times L to the fourth, and that's 18 feet. Here's where we go times, whoops, yucky. Here's where we go times 12 inches per foot. But that whole thing is cubed, the 18 times 12, sorry, to the fourth power. And in the denominator, we have 384, which is unitless, times uh, 29, thou, uh, 29 million, okay, I'll just write e to the sixth, and that's pounds per square inch, PSI is the unit for, uh, for that, uh, times I is from the table, so we got to go back and look up our I, and I believe it's 88.6 inches to the fourth. So all this in the numerator divided by all that in the denominator. And here's why, why it's so important to go and check your units, right? So pounds in the numerator here. Let me just do a different color so you can see. Pounds of, hello. Give me green. Pounds, and then pounds in this denominator here. Feet, 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 feet. Now the inches get a little squirrely because we've got inches in the denominator here, inches to the fourth here, inches to the fourth here, and one over inches squared here. Hmm, so what's that going to mean? Well, that means this inches squared, this inches to the fourth cancels this inches to the fourth. But we still need to remember to bring the numbers 18 times 12 to the fourth. This is one over inches, and then this one over one over inches, that inches, sorry, inches squared, that's going to go to the numerator, and we're going to end up with a unit of inches, and we're all done. So that checks out. Um, and if you're having trouble with this dimensional analysis, you're really going to want to work on that if you go into a program in engineering. So you crank out all these numbers. And you get something like a uh, deflection max equals 0.91, I think. 0.91. So now we have a problem because guess what? It exceeds our limit here. So... We don't even have to go on and, and uh, do the second calculation with the live load only because um, we've already failed this test. So that's bad. This is a fail. Of course, if we didn't have a plaster ceiling, we would have lower, uh, you know, we would have less restrictive limits. So, you know, I don't know if you remember, but it's 180 and 240 here. Right, for these, for non plaster ceilings, those probably would have been fine, but it's clearly said plaster ceilings. So we fail here. So now what we have to do is we have to go back and reiterate, okay? So we're going to go to the, the table again, and our W, what do we start with? W12 by 14. We were right here. We're right there. We're going to have to move up one in the table and try a W12 by 16. So we can see the plastic modulus is higher, which is good, because that means it'll ha handle the bending moment. We can see the area. So the area under, well, you have to go and look at the dimensions. The area is, is greater. It's the same uh, depth, but uh, the W16 has a little bit more area. And so that should be fine. So now all we need to do is check the um, section module. Sorry, the uh, moment of inertia there, which is what I is called. And notice that's a lot bigger than 88.6. So basically now... We're going to go and do this whole thing again, but we're just going to try the 10, I forgot the number already, 
the 103 instead of the 88.6. Now, if you kept this all in your calculator, all you need to do is multiply the whole thing by 88.6 and divide by 103. And if you do that, then uh, you get a smaller number and check, check, that'll work. And your final answer for this uh, becomes a W14, sorry, W12 by 16 uh, for your final uh, beam design selection. Whew. Boy, that was a long one, wasn't it, guys? But still better than a sharp stick in the eye. Maybe not as bad as the code book. I don't know. You tell me.